Oh, under there, quite those. Oh, look at that. That's, <laughs> That's kind of cool. That is interesting. Hold on a second. All right. Well, how are y'all doing? Uh, it's old Holy Smoke and Pipe Padre back with you yet again. And I am just going to do a 360 video. Got some coffee here. Got uh, a nice... I think this is a... What is, is this a Boots Shokan? I think this is a Boots Shokan. Uh, I believe it is. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah, it's a Boots Shokan. Yeah, this is a Boots... A Butts Choking, as <laughs> some of you... Have referred to it, a butt choking, boot choking, boot choking, and in it I am smoking. Believe it or not, actually, this is. Um, many people would say that this is a summer blend, a summer blend, yes, or like golden sliced. Now, let me ask you a question from the back. Doesn't this little character up here kind of look like a little bit of a nun? I always thought this was a nun until somebody told me or pointed out, it's not an un, it's a judge. So tonight, we're going to talk about judgment. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, Orlick Golden Sliced, and you know what? I have a confession to make, but first, but first, it's lighter, lighting time. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. I have been hankering for some Navy Flake. And basically, Golden Slice is a uh, Navy Flake. Okay? Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, it's about two flakes in this. Now, the confession that I want to make about this today is... You can probably still see that right there. You can probably see that right there. Yeah. All you got to do is scroll around on this 360 video. And you can see what I have over here. I have my Frankenstein blend that I just got through making a video about just the other day. And I have some remnants of some Stonehaven. I just found some other, another pow, another open, well not open, yeah, I guess it's open, um, container of Stonehaven, which I didn't know I had. And so, you know, Bob's your uncle, Sally's your aunt. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna marry this up with my uh, Frankenstein blend. Add, add some extra body to it. Um, hmm. But I just had a hankering for um, some Orlick Golden Sliced. Actually, it says gold. Yeah, golden. Gold. Not that. I said golden. Golden slice. Sliced. Sliced. Sort of like a sliced orange. I always think of this. I always think of something citrusy when I think of this. Do you guys think of something citrusy when you smoke Orlick Golden Slice? Golden Sliced. Mm. And you know, that's something beautiful about um, Navy Flake, and it is sliced. It is sliced. Yeah. And again, I did not know about 10 tobaccos and the goodness of 10 tobaccos until I joined the YouTube pipe community. So thank you, YouTube pipe community. Mmm. Well, I'm here, as you can see, <coughs> in my, in my uh, studio. My man cave, my Scottish, my Caledonian room, Scottish room. In this video, I am just going to pull out all the stops. I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about. Yeah, I'll probably talk a little bit about Brexit. Um, and again, my beloved Scotland. And I know that um, uh, some people <clears throat> we, we, we probably are aghast that I was for vote leave, even though I'm not a member of the UK. Uh, and uh, but, but I've been to the UK. I've been to the I've been to Europe. I you know I love Europe. I love the UK. Um, so I am a I am a guy on the sidelines, and so you know my comments are just my comments, my opinions. Take or toss them. But again, I really don't have a vested interest in, in uh, what's going on. So that, that does separate me. And I'll, I'll be the first to admit that. So again, I, I'd hope that my, um, my comments, um, although they're just my opinion, that's all they are, 
you don't have to subscribe to my opinions just to subscribe to my channel. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Okay. So we can still be friends. Yes, we can. Anyway, so I'm uh, just sitting here on a Friday night working on one of my videos for my other channel. And I just had, the, again, a hankering for some Navy Flake. And um, I have to say... That Navy Flake is just something that's, oh, how do you say it? It's, it's something that just satisfies. It's not, you know, we have a lot of luxury or exotic tobaccos that we can choose from. And I certainly, I was going through my little, my little, <laughs> my tobacco collection. I guess this is a perfect complement to, to coffee. In fact, um, and I love the fact, uh, now I know some people, some people like smoking their pipes, but they prefer to do it outside because it does linger. The, the, the aroma will linger. Now, and again, if you're married, you know, God bless you. I'm happy for you, but at the same time, hey, okay. Um, but your spouses uh, probably may not like it when you smoke in the doors. Now, I have always loved the aroma, the fragrance, as I used to say, the announcement of, uh, of pipe tobacco. I have positive, nothing but positive memories of the, the aroma of pipe tobacco, whether it's the, the, uh, the, after, after, the, the afterglow, if you will, of a, of a pipe. And the in the in that that beautiful kind of haunting aroma fragrance you know some people might oh it stinks in here it smells like it smells like tobacco but I like that I like that like I used to love to go into the Briar Patch Pipe Shop uh, in Arden Fair Mall and just uh, just smell all the tobacco it just tobacco smells good to me I mean I, I granted some people don't like the smell of tobacco and but most of us I think really do. There's just something for me. It's it, it it is evocative. It takes me back to my childhood. No, I didn't smoke a pipe when I was five years old, although I wanted to. My brother Earl would come home, and of course, being the inveterate pipe smoker that he was, um, would smoke his pipe. And I remember even when he wasn't smoking his pipe, I would go in and find his uh, pack of packet of uh, sale tobacco and I'd open it up and I'd smell the lovely fragrance of that tobacco that that uh, delicious delectable tender uh, tobacco uh, in his pouch you know and I used to like to play with the pipe and you know even that burnt smell of the pipe I just love that I love that so mm, I'm just sipping on this this beautiful golden one looks like now the thing I wanted to confess first off is um, this, believe it or not, <laughs> is a lot like um, <laughs> a lot of the things I've been smoking, like my Escudo, and uh, here it is here, the Escudo, we even got some uh, Dunhill Mixture 965, okay, I'm using this little uh, stand here, okay, um, but it's uh, probably four years old. I did give it a little spritz of distilled water, let it sit for a day, and it just moistened it up just perfectly enough to where it's sweet, flavorful, and oh so delicious. Especially with a cup of coffee. Mm. Okay. Mm. Oh, man, that is good. But I happen to, again, getting back to the aroma, the lingering aroma of, of pipe tobacco in a room. This room here is, again, my personal study. I really don't entertain people here, I mean, unless it's just a really close friend. Um, and most people that do come in here, they'll go, oh, you smoke a pipe. And some people will kind of, it won't be a problem, and some people will make sure that they just get out as quickly as they can, because they don't like it, they don't enjoy it. But uh, those of you who do smoke pipes and cigars would probably enjoy sitting over there on the couch or pulling up a chair and, you know, like my best buddy Don, you know, we might be able to sit here and talk and have his pipe together. 
Hmm. But so the next day, I still had the, the, the lingering fragrance, aroma uh, of the pipe, and it just actually smells good to me. It just does. It just is, uh, you know, it was probably reminiscent of what fireplace, when people used to burn uh, a fireplace on a regular basis in their home, you would still get a bit of a smoky smell in the house. And most people would just learn to live with that, and it was just part of life. Before we became too darn doggone politically correct. Hmm. So anyway, um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, two things. Brexit. Yeah, I guess actually it's Brexit. I mean, as far as where 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 things are at today, two weeks two weeks uh, going two weeks on now after the vote. Sadly, the thing in Orlando has happened. I mean, uh, well, was it Orlando? Well, Orlando, yes. Gosh, that was just a couple weeks ago. And now, as of yesterday, uh, July 7th, we had the shooting in uh, Dallas. And um, so, anyway, I think I will not really talk a lot about that because I, I don't know what to say, to be honest with you. Um, that's all I can say is it's a horrible, horrible tragedy, and I am really uh, grieved that um, that we seem to be, and that's it's insane to me. We're going into some new horrible race wars. You know, it's like you know, I don't understand that. Um, I have had black friends, and I, I honestly do not have a prejudice bone in my body. If you're black, you're black, and that's that. Okay, that's cool. Um, again, one of my favorite, favorite uh, YouTube personalities. I know some people probably would frown on me for watching them because they do talk about some naughty things. They and they definitely have potty mouths. But the Hodge twins, I love. You know, uh, Keith and Eric. I think they're great guys. I know some people think that I'm a because I like their videos, I'm some, you know, white racist guy trolling them, and I'm not, you know. I put comments on there, like when they went back from, yes, when they went back from being vegetarian or whatever they were, flexitarians or pescatarians, they were trying to do the vegan thing. I, did a, I think they actually did a vegan, a vegan diet for 60 days, and they said, hey guys, folks, we tried it, and we just, this isn't for us. And God bless them. I, I didn't know if they were going to make it. I didn't know if they were actually going to become true, true vegans. But anyway, the bottom line was that hmm, they gave it a try. And when they told their fans that, hey, we're going back to eating meat, they were going to try to like not eat as much meat. But they decided, hey, we're going to eat meat and we're going to enjoy it. And I'll show you more power to them. God bless them. God bless the Hodge twins. Um... Again, um, I've had uh, today some really interesting encounters with some very angry vegans. And again, my position is I don't, I'm not against vegans per se. I'm not against uh, them. Some of them have very positive messages for the most part. And I, and I take what they say with a little bit of, oh, you know, that's an interesting perspective. But where I draw the line is when they come after me, which they did today, and said, you are evil, you're a sick human being, if you eat meat, uh, you're a F and this and an F and that, and just a whole bunch of cuss words, and you're a despicable stain, you know, I'm not going to say all the nasty things this one person said to me. But I held my ground, I just said, look, we disagree, but I believe that God gave us animals to eat, and I'm going to eat them, and enjoy them. And if you choose not to eat animals, for whatever reason, that's your business, and I salute you, and I support you. But when you come and tell me, you can't have your opinion, oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and this gets me to kind of in going a long way around the barn uh, about what I want to talk about a little bit about Brexit. Not so much Brexit, but I want to talk about the millennials. I want to talk about millennials. So if you're a millennial, hey, this is video is for you. Um, but it seems like, and again, uh, forgive me, um, 
You know, I, when I found out that 60, what, 62% of Scotlanders uh, voted to, to remain in the EU, I thought, okay, that's, that's fine, but 38% but did vote to leave. Where I have a problem is, is when uh, Nicola, is it Nicola Sturgeon, Spurgeon, Sturgeon, says that all of Scotland voted to remain, that's not true. See, that's what I have a problem with, is when people ignore the opposing viewpoint, or they try to silence it into oblivion. That's where I, and you, you guys have seen me ranting about this one issue, probably more than anything else, because it seems to prop up, crop up in so many different spheres of the, the, the body politic these days. Whether you're talking about veganism, you're talking about Brexit, you're talking about the, 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 the church and the church's um, teachings on, you know, the, the hot button topics. When people basically say, no, we don't want that view and you can't believe that anymore, that's where I have a problem. So if a, pro if a person said, I, I voted to remain, well, God bless you, you know, brother, God bless you, sister Sturgeon, you know, um, again, will Scotland have a, a second referendum for independence? I don't know. I honestly don't, I don't have a crystal ball. Now, if they decided that they wanted to have a vote, a second referendum and vote for independence, hey, you know, go for it. I have no uh, qualms about that. I think that's great. But here's my here's my point on where I see Nicola Sturgeon is in a, and forgive me if I if I sound insulting I don't mean to be insulting, but it just this is how it she she struck me before the dust had settled she comes out swinging saying Scotland's going to stay with the EU and blah 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 we're going to get a special deal for Scotland you know blah 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 well excuse me uh, last I heard you guys were still part of the UK why isn't she trying to talk to Whitehall why is she not trying to you know talk to the, the to the Parliament down there and say hey this is what we would like to propose but no she runs off to Europe and oh they called her a little sweet darling and everything but the reality was legally you had don't have a leg to stand on lady and I know I probably have already PO'd a couple of you already but you still love me, I hope. Okay, all I'm saying is that she acts like a little spoiled girl who doesn't want to talk to mommy and daddy, but she wants to run and, and live with mommy, uh, grandma and grandpa, Grammy and Gramp. So, God bless you, Nicola, but you know what? You need to grow up a little bit, little girl, and you know, start some real adult negotiations and talks, first of all, with the UK, and find out, hey, I found out that um, Scotland's biggest trader is with the UK. 65% of the things that they they import or export, I'm not sure if it's export or import, is 65% of that comes from directly from the UK, not the EU. Now again, that's nothing, I'm not putting, don't hear me trouncing Europeans in Europe. I'm not, that's not what I'm against. I'm not against anything, actually. So don't hear me trashing on, I think Europe is a terrible, ugly, evil place. No, I lived there for three years. It was one of the most ex beautiful experiences of my life. If I could go back tomorrow, I would. Um, this time I bring my passport. What's going on here with my little light here? Is it is it turning off here? I don't know what's going on. It's doing something. I know it did this before. I guess it's just catching up or something. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep rambling on here. Um, so anyway, I'm not against Europeans at all, but I do have questions about the European Economic Union in that they were trying to become more of a political rather than an economic blo uh, block or, or, or organization with the anthem and the flag and everything. So again, I, that's where I have problems. And I wasn't voting against Europe so much or in favor of, uh, uh, I was, I was, if, when I was for Brexit, I was basically uh, it always comes back down to the to the sovereignty of the UK, and that's that was the issue that I was thinking was most important. So anyway, but here's the thing: a lot of millennials last uh, Saturday were angry and upset, Wah. 
And they were crying and pouting and, you know, oh, what's going to happen to us? And here's the thing. I want to say that, and again, I if you're a millennial, and I get, I, this doesn't apply to everybody. Again, just because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of picking on millennials right now doesn't mean I hate millennials. But I think a lot of the millennials um, <clears throat> pretty much have had a very pampered and easy life. They have not had to literally fight for something. A lot of a lot of things have been given to them by way of whether it's the UK or the EU or whatever. Uh, yes, they've had a very <clears throat> good life, some kind of sheltered life, and <clears throat> they've been given a lot of things. Um, you know, free education, I guess, in some ways, free travel, perhaps. I don't know how it all works over there in the UK and the EU, but yes, they are beneficiaries of a state-run system, a government, socialism. And, and again, I'm not opposed to that. I don't think that it's wrong to, to help people better themselves. But when you're constantly dependent upon the government for almost everything, that's not a good thing. And yes, Europe did fight two hideous, horrible world wars. But that's where I want to say where that makes the difference is that those generations literally had to stand up and fight and literally put their lives on the line to enjoy the freedoms that these young people seem to want to just give away carte blanche. And that's where I get concerned about this younger generation. You know, they go, oh, it was the old people. It was the old people that stole our future. No, the old people preserved your future by giving you the option uh, to be able to govern yourselves. They gave you the gift of democracy. And I think that's why I was so strongly in favor of Brexit. And it's sad because, you know, a lot of young people today are clueless. They're, they, you know, and I listen to a lot of them talk about how sad and how afraid they are. Afraid of what? You know, it's, it's okay, if you're afraid, uh, if you're 37,000 feet up in the air, and you're afraid of heights, that's understandable. <laughs> if um, there's a big scary guy in an alley and he's coming at you with a big butcher knife and you're afraid, that's reasonable. But they were just afraid. They were afraid because they were gonna lose their uh, government programs for education. And they were afraid that they were gonna be deported. They were afraid of this, they're afraid of that. And the problem is that when we're afraid, A fear, seven times out of 10, what we're afraid of never even materializes. So, so many of them were afraid of nothing. Now, is there gonna be economic instability for a while? I believe there is, absolutely. Is it gonna be, you know, the Great Depression all over again? Probably not. So again, I just think that the the difference between this gener this current generation, the millennials, and and past generations was the past generations literally had to lay their lives on the altar of service to their country to preserve the freedoms that these young people enjoy and are so willingly to give away. Because what? They want safety and they want security. So I, I think when it comes down to, do you want to sell your birthright for a bowl of pottage? Or do you want to do the adult thing? And <clears throat> even though it's hard and it's difficult at times, you know, freedom isn't cheap. You have to remember that freedom is not cheap. It has been bought at a great, great, great price. And the generations that came before, you know, do not want to see that squandered. And I am fully in, in support of that. So again, when I when I see the young people whining and complaining and they're afraid of this and they're afraid of that, and I'm going to say, grow up, it's going to be okay. You know, act like an adult. You know? Keep calm, smoke a pipe, and carry on. That's what I say.
So anyway, I just wanted to get on here and kind of vent a little bit. Um, there's a whole bunch of other issues that I could go into right now. And I won't. Relax. I won't. Because I just want to enjoy your pipe. And I just wanted to share that moment with you. Kind of vent a little bit. Uh, kind of get some things out in the open there. You know, again, if Scotland decides that it wants to, you know, have a second referendum, providing they can have a second referendum for independence, you know, I, I certainly support that. Um, I don't know if that would be a good idea economically for them. I think that they feel that if they could cut themselves off from UK and join the EU, I guess that's the way these young people think, that somehow the, U, the EU is sort of like grandparents, nice and benevolent and loving and understanding, and they're going to give them everything they want. And in reality, that is never going to happen. And I just think that Nicola Sturgeon really does act like a little girl. And I would really like to see an adult, you know, lead Scotland into good negotiations with both the UK and the EU, instead of just trying to run run away from, you know, because they don't like England, you know. And there's there's probably reasons for that, obviously. I mean, like the Battle of Culloden for one thing, huh? Okay. But, again, I, I just don't see eye to eye with a lot of people, whether they're vegans or millennials. A lot of vegans are millennials, or a lot of millennials are vegans. But uh, the thing is, and, and that's, a, that's another thing too, I could get into a whole dissertation on the whole vegan thing, but I won't. Um, I pretty much said all I want to say about that tonight. But um, obviously, I have different opinions than some of you all. But in the at the end of the day, I find it comforting to be able to have a creative outlet and a uh, uh, what I would call a, a happy, wholesome uh, avocation of pipe collecting, pipe smoking, pipe pontificating, or pipe t pipeificating, which I'm doing now, uh, and just enjoying being alive uh, it's sad and it's tragic in some ways we live in such a sad world I mean you know the world can be a wonderful wonderful place but it can also be a very dark and scary place so sometimes I remember the the, uh, the hobbits in Lord of the Rings and you know they're going through what the they're going up to Mount Doom and to get rid of the ring but it was an arduous journey Many of you can recall the story of the Lord of the Rings, and they they're in one of their little <clears throat> rest spot, rest bits there, respites, and um, and uh, they said, you know, I hope that as, as the ring kind of got fragmented, the different group members got fragmented from each other. They said, uh, was it one of the two? Was it Merry and Pippin said that they hoped that wherever the other ones were, they had a pipe to comfort them, and I'd always loved that. There were lots of allusions to pipe smoking, but the thing that about the pipe smoking in The Lord of the Rings, and I guess I'll end on all this, was that there was a sense of positiveness about smoking a pipe and how smoking a pipe could be that one thing that did bring comfort, even in the midst of sadness, loss, death and darkness. You know, it could be literally a light in your day, a light in your night, and it gives comfort. So, I wish comfort and peace to all those who are troubled, whether you're troubled at the events that happened in Dallas, or Orlando, or uh, what happened uh, in the UK a couple weeks ago, or whatever, sad to say, tragedies may be on tomorrow's horizon, hopefully you can find a, a calming place, a safe place, and light up a pipe, and light up your world. God bless you, and thanks for watching.